Good practice. Worked a lot of situ a lot of situations today, which was good. A lot of end of game situations, both two minute and four minute. And just our experience tells us that those are really important parts of the game that you can't uh, you can't ignore. So we'll spend time on those uh, on those segments. But it was good work. So How tough was it to lose Patrick Larimore? Well, Patrick came in last night and talked, and after talking it over with the doctors and talking it over with his family, and just the way he felt, he felt like uh, for his future health, you know, long-term health, um, that he should medically retire. And obviously a very tough decision for Patrick, very tough decision for this team, but uh, more importantly, you know, Patrick was mature in his decision. He gave it a lot of thought. Um, he didn't get captured in the moment and only thinking about the here and now. You know, he was thinking about his long-term health, and we support him. Um, until he files that paperwork, then nothing is official. But uh, it looks like that's the way it's headed. You know, you never know. Things could change. Patrick has been a huge part of this team uh, long before I got here. In the time that I've been here, he's made an incredible impression on not only me, but the rest of our coaches. I think he's probably one of the most respected players on this team, if not the most respected player on this team. He's the same guy every day. Uh, he comes to practice. He's focused. He plays hard. He plays with intensity. He plays with passion. He holds his teammates accountable. He holds himself accountable to a high standard. Um, he's fearless. Uh, he's all those things that you love in a, in a football player. And so we'll miss that. Um, we expect somebody else to step in or others to step in and fill his role, both on the field and as a leader in the locker room. And we're confident that he will. Um, Patrick has indicated to us that he needs just a little bit of time away just to kind of grieve football. And then he wants to be back with this team in a role of support, uh, maybe, you know, a student assistant coach. Uh, you know, you'd have to ask him specifically what he wants to do with this future. But, uh, you know, it's important for us, and I think it's important for Patrick that he still remains a part of this thing, even though he won't be able to play football. So it's a big blow. Player of this caliber, that's got to be one of the more, most bravest decisions to conclusion to come to. I think that that's a great way to put it. I think it was brave. I think it was hard. Um, this is a guy that, you know, when you talk about football character, a guy that just loves football and eats, drinks, and sleeps football um, and comes out every day with a passion for football, that's Patrick Laramore. And so, you know, to make that decision the way he did and to think it through the way he did and to approach his teammates and his coaches the way he did and, and say what he did took a lot of courage. And uh, you know, I'm proud of him for it. This game is it's a, it's a great game. It's provided a lot of us with a lot of things. It's provided me with a, uh, you know, my life's work. But at the end of the day, these kids that play it, you know, they have to go on and live the rest of their lives. And uh, it takes guts, especially at that age, to make the decision that you know, I can't do it anymore. And if I do continue to do it, my long-term health is going to be sacrificed. I think you have to really applaud him for that. Were you preparing for the possibility of this, moving Damien inside and that, you know, with two concussions in four months, that... I'd be lying if I didn't say it was in the back of my head. I was obviously not hopeful. I was hopeful that it wouldn't happen. Right. Um, just because you guys know Pat, and you guys have watched Pat a lot more than I've watched Pat. And, you, you know, what I'm saying is redundant to you. The guy's passionate and you love him on your team. But... Uh, just because of what's going on in the world of concussions and um, the things that we're finding out in research on a daily basis, I think you always have to be prepared for this when a guy suffered multiple concussions and he plays that position. You know, that's not a position where you're going to go a game and have two or three hits. You know, if you're a corner, you maybe, you know, maybe it's a different deal because you're not involved in collisions every down. But when you're a middle linebacker or you're a, an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman, I mean, you can't play games without without collisions. And uh, so unfortunately, it took its toll on Patrick. And, uh, you know, we, we just really want the, the best for Patrick. You know, we want him to be happy. We want him to be healthy. We want him to be content in life. We want him to have a, a great future. You know, we're hopeful that that's with the UCLA football program. I think this guy will be, if he decides to go that path, could be a, just a tremendous asset to this university. He's, uh, he's a great kid. Coach, we couldn't remember. Was it just these two, or had he had one before? I think he had, but we couldn't remember. You know, I, I wouldn't be the guy to ask that because I wasn't here. I know that there was a, the real serious one in spring, and then this, you know, what it was the second or third day of practice, we didn't even have full pads on. And I think what really concerns you is, much like with Wade Yandel, when it, you have a serious one, and then you come back, and really your first day of any contact, and minimal contact, you suffer another one. I think it really, you know, is a cause for concern. 
um, because you know that was four to five months of healing or four months of healing, and uh, you know this is a great like I said this is a great game it's an awesome game we love this game, but uh, you know you got to live your life. What's this do for you guys in the middle now? I mean, it's well, here, here's what I think it does, Chris, is that Damien obviously uh, becomes a big factor there, and I think that uh, it forces us to accelerate the learning curve of Aaron Porter. Um, you know, Ryan Hoffmeister has been having a good camp. You know, his role will increase. Um, you know, we've just got to look at our options. But, you know, we've got a good linebacker core. Uh, but, man, it's just, you know, on the field, off the field, in the locker room, in the huddle, you know, from snap to whistle, it's hard to replace a Patrick Larimore. It's just really hard to replace that intensity, that passion, that commitment to the game. With more depth outside, might um, Zumwalt move inside then? We really, like, we really like Jordan outside. We really like think he's a, an impact player outside. So that would be a backup plan, but not a primary plan. You, you've been around the NFL a lot. Did, did Larry Moore have NFL potential? I don't know that, that I would, would be able to say that as of yet. Okay. I, I haven't seen him play a game up close, but he has all the attributes that NFL teams are looking for in terms of intangibles. You know, the things I've already talked about, the mm -hmm. passion, the commitment to the game, the study habits, the toughness. Um, the commitment, you know, all of those things. He absolutely had all of those things. Uh, I think that uh, I would have to watch him play a season, you know, and, and up close and personal and study the film and do all those things to be able to tell you, you know, if he was going to get drafted, where he was going to get drafted. There's no doubt in my mind that he'd be in an NFL camp in yeah. some form or fashion. And once he was in an, NFL, in an NFL camp, it would be hard to get him out of an NFL camp. So, so it wouldn't be far-fetched to say he's almost turned down an NFL career last night? I, I don't think he turned down anything. Yeah, you I know, I, I just think that uh, the, the kid didn't quit. Yeah. The kid did not quit. He absolutely did not quit. He made a rational decision based on the information that he has from the, from the doctors, based on the information that he garnered from talking to his parents, based on, you know, hours and hours of reflection. Uh, probably the hardest decision that he's had to make at this point in his young life. It won't be the last one, but it was certainly, I'm sure, the hardest that he's had to make. So, you know, I, I, think, that to, I think to speculate on uh, whether or not he could play in the NFL or not, uh, I think if he reads that or he hears that, it's going to make him feel worse. And I don't want that. You know, I don't want that. I want the kid to find happiness in his life. Does Todd Golfer figure to be in the mix now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Todd and Todd, Todd's going to be in the mix in the middle, yeah. So. Yeah, he's just nursing some soreness in his ham, quad or ham. I, you know, I don't even know what it is. I think it's his hamstring, upper ham. So he's doing some things, but, you know, he's – remember in spring when his shoulder was bothering him a little bit and we kind of backed him off? This guy's a really good football player. I mean, he is a really outstanding football player. And we want to make sure that he's getting enough work, that he's ready for the season opener, but uh, we're protecting him so that he's healthy for the season opener. So, other than that, it's a tough one, you know. It's a tough one for Pat, so. All right.